Wolves 2024, Malta. I'm Bobby Tan from Performotion and joining us today also from Performotion as our guest speaker, we have Daisy fr from Australia. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. So, Daisy, you punched your ticket to Wolves, uh, just like a lot of people there, uh, through Junior Nationals in Australia. And yeah, how it was, was lots of fun. <laughs> how was Junior Nationals like? Uh, it was lots of fun. So that was my kind of second Nationals. So I kind of knew the experience. It was in the same location. So I kind of knew everything that was kind of going on. And I guess like the only goal of that Nationals was to kind of go in there, put my best total up and um, win and get my ticket to Malta. I think I was pretty ahead in the nominations. So it was pretty clear that I was going to go. So I really just had to have a decent day <laughs> yeah and you did really well you, like you got you won your weight class and not just that you also got second overall yeah so second overall uh, was gunning for the best female lifter uh, a pen in the books it definitely was um at the end of the day i know that may had an absolutely phenomenal day like i think she went like nine for nine and hit a huge total as a 69 so yeah. well very well deserved to go to may <laughs> and to double back a bit you did say you were also competing at open nationals just a month before junior nationals so yeah that's right <laughs> tell, us, tell us and the viewers a bit more about the decision going behind your participation in open nationals yeah, so originally I was planning on doing open nationals and I was going to do only as kind of a qualifier for bench only worlds. But then um, with the new federation APA, they decided that we didn't need to do that qualifier to get to bench only worlds and we could kind of just do it on a bench only comp. So I was still going to go over to Newcastle for open nationals anyway. So we kind of just decided to trial that peak and taper and travel and everything like that and just do kind of like a SBD day and see how I'd go. Yeah. And you did really well against the opens. You got fifth and yeah. you key out your total shortly after by around five kilos at Junior Nets. Yeah, that's it. And it was good to do Open Nationals as well because I was able to get the junior records. And so then when Junior Nationals came around, I could just chip my own records. <laughs> <laughs> so that was nice. It was a nice little thing. <laughs> yeah. Would you be looking to do that again at Wells for the Australian Junior National Records? Um, Potentially. It would be really nice too. Um. I haven't put much thought into that, but yeah, it would be nice to kind of keep chipping away at them and just set them higher. I know there's some really, um, really strong girls in the junior 57s now, and they're because they're juniors, their program, their progress is just going through the roof. Yeah. So I'm sure that someone will take them away from me very soon, but I'm very lucky to have them at the moment. <laughs> and shortly after junior nationals, you became Miss Worldwide. Where did you go? Um, so I went over to Texas for bench only worlds, which was just so much fun. <laughs> and yeah. how did you do? Yeah, so I ended up coming um, third in the junior 57s. Um, so I went one for three on bench. I just got my last two overall on elbow depth, but I still, even with just that um, 75 kilo open, I was still able to come third and then I set like the bench only junior record in Australia. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was nice and it was good kind of getting that international competition experience and the travel and everything like that. It just gives me like, I guess, more understanding of what goes into that as yeah. not only like as an athlete, but like as a nutritionist, as well, like traveling and weight cutting and everything like that as well. How was the process for, let's say, uh, weight cutting for you? Did you have to do any for bench walls with a long haul flight? 
Um, with the flight, um, I really didn't eat any of the plain food, um, just because a lot of it is high sodium, just so it yeah. tastes a lot better. Um, <laughs> so I bought a lot of my own food on the plane, and I was doing a little bit of a gut cut running into that. So it was just a lot of like protein bars, muesli bars, protein shakes, just like really easy things. Um, yeah. And then I kind of put it in like little like packs. So it's like I would have like a a 500 calorie like meal and it would be like a protein shake a protein bar and then something else like cookies or something for my carbs and then i'd have that every like five hours so i still have some sort of routine <laughs> yeah <laughs> with the flats yeah so it works quite well. like, <laughs> with the time difference as well you'd be eating a lot of those meals right yeah yeah that's right yeah so it was mainly it wasn't too focused on calories or anything like that it was kind of just making sure that i'm still eating regularly and did you have the water load i didn't no so i, I oh, don't really I, I don't tend to water load with myself um i just don't really respond well to that right, <laughs> with okay. the travel and everything like that yeah i know that some people have had really bad experiences on planes where they don't really want to give like extra water to people um Ooh. but yeah yeah they get a bit stingy sometimes <laughs> yeah uh, i think one time when i was water loading on the plane i think the the flight attendant just gave me the entire uh bottle of plain water and i was just chugging yeah it that's yeah. it yeah yeah i had a good experience they were able to like fill up my water and everything like that but i know some people they were like yeah. nah, not not doing that yeah. <laughs> so i, I just don't want to risk it <laughs> i think it's much uh more convenient for them if like you just took the entire bottle, then like they That's don't have it. to pour it. Yeah. You. yeah. That's it. So yeah, it's nice. if anyone listening in is gonna water cut, just just ask for the whole bottle. <laughs> They'll be more That's than happy. Yeah. 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 So you went to Bench Wells. You got third. Yeah. I think I believe it was the first medal you've earned for Australia as well. It was uh, so. Of, like, yeah. Yeah, so with the new federation, um, that was kind of the first international medal that we got just in general. So that was really yeah. exciting to kind of be the first person to do yeah. that. <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> yeah. And tell us more about your reflections from nationals, from worlds, and what are your key takeaways from each of them? Yeah, so... After nationals, I kind of went straight back into prep for bench only worlds. And a lot of that focus was just maintaining my bench and just kind of like pushing that as much as we could, prioritizing that in my training sessions by doing bench before like squat or deadlift, whereas usually I would kind of do squat and then bench just to kind of prioritize and maximize that. Um, we kind of stuck with the same micro that we did. It, we haven't really changed the micro much since I've started really well like I think I've put like something like 35 40 kilos on my bench since I started so um something's working um yeah. but yeah it's, it was just a lot of fun going into that comp it was a little bit of a short turnaround but bench only comps are just kind of a little bit of fun <laughs> I was like it was, I was like I'm just going over there have some fun hopefully I play some program but yeah I just have fun with bench yeah, I realized that bench only competitions uh, tend to be really short. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Like, like you get three minutes on. Yeah. <laughs> like, like nice. you fly. You, yeah, you fly all that way for you know. You do like three, four warm ups. You yeah. do your three lifts, your three minutes on the platform, and then you're done. So it went really quick. <laughs> yeah, it's it's probably like uh, shorter than like the time that from you from your way into your first lift yeah that's it yeah. i actually found that i had to wait so long like i think i weighed in like i was like number one so i weighed in and then i had to wait oh. like two hours or something and it was like oh my God. so bored because it's like yeah. i was like oh, i don't really i was like oh i don't, I don't really want to warm up now because i'm like i have three warm-ups <laughs> yeah like so you don't like, need to put on these kind of... sleeves stuff like that yeah so i was just it was nice it was easy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So does that mean we'll be seeing you at more Benjamin-only competitions? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> I think we've already kind of set our plans for, like, the ages. That's in Japan next year. 
Yeah. Um, so I think I'll do that. I think I have a couple of friends that might have joined me now into the bench only life. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, potentially, I don't know if I'll go to Bench Worlds next year in Norway, but potentially the year after because I think it's in Poland and I think that will be really fun. Right. That's yeah. Awesome. So I'm always looking ahead at where the competitions are. <laughs> yeah. There's always the IPF yeah. calendar at the website. So. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And how was it? How was the experience of competing at bench worlds overall? Not just not just the competition itself, but just being in Texas. Yeah. Oh, it was so nice, especially escaping escaping like the Australian like winter. It was so nice. It was nice and hot, hot over there. Um, and we just had such a great group of people. Um, in the Australian team, we all got along really well. And if we weren't competing, we were out eating together or chilling in the pool or just chatting. Um, so it was a really great experience. And just like chatting with everyone else from like Australia as well, because I've been powerlifting for very long. So a lot of these people, this was like kind of like my first time meeting them. And so it's been really good to kind of get to know them more. And yeah, it was a great like networking experience as well. Yeah. What about the, uh, people from other countries did you learn more about powerlifting from other countries yeah yeah so I learned like a lot of different um like different ways that people do bench programming um a lot of like sets of 10 by 10 um yeah. like machine gun just like little things like that um that it's just interesting to see how like people play around with bench at um it also like showed me that like so many people do see them. <laughs> so oh, many man. people oh, yeah, sink. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So many people sink. Um, just to kind of get around that elbow depth rule. But yeah, it was really great watching everyone because there are some some little girls lifting huge weights. <laughs> That's so sick. Yeah. <laughs> and it's been half a year. It's yeah, it's been seven months since the year started, and you've competed three times already. And yeah. it's going to be your fourth in about one and a half months. So yeah, have you been going through any injuries or like, how is it like competing so many times in one year? Yeah, yeah. So even since I um, started powerlifting back in like January last year, I think I've had something like seven or eight comps, like including the bench only one. So quite a lot but I love competing I love the being on the platform uh, all of that um I'm very lucky that I haven't had any like injuries or niggles or anything like that um which I'm very lucky for like knock on wood <laughs> I haven't had anything bad so I That's think good. it's just kind of yeah just making sure that I'm doing everything right not pushing myself too much or um making sure I'm doing warm-ups just little things like that um I also get like remedial massages and cupping and stuff like that to kind of help as well. It's great. Yeah, I think it's it just shows that you take charge of not just yourself in training, but also what you do outside of training. Yeah, and even just like little things, like making sure I'm getting like my steps and sleep and water, and little like little things. They all add up in the end. And I guess also nutrition, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I do know nutrition. Sometimes I'm a bad nutritionist to myself, but uh, <laughs> I know how to dial in when I need to dial in. So that's, that's really great. great. Yeah. And what is it like? Uh, I guess coaching yourself for nutrition. Like, do you feel like it's a bit hard sometimes? Ah, uh, yeah. I find it more difficult when I am kind of doing like an acute weight cut. That's when I really lean on my coach as well just to kind of give me like a different like um like an outsized perspective on it because I can yeah. definitely be like oh I didn't drop any weight today like something's wrong and it's like if I was in, if I was like coaching a client I'd be like oh it's fine just like wait another day and it would drop but I will like, touch myself so it's good to kind of have like him have like, I just get right? that's right yeah I kind of give him my plan and he knows that like I know what I'm doing so it all works out right that's great and it's been almost uh, a month since bench rolls ended, right? Yeah. And unfortunately, during bench rolls, you had your lifts overruled. I think, yeah, you, like you said earlier, it was your second and third attempt. Yeah, that's it. Ha have you 
made any technical changes? Like earlier you mentioned that a lot of people did sync bench and is that something that you've done post Wolves? Yeah, so we did kind of plan on it, especially after watching Open Worlds and kind of seeing how the judging was a little bit iffy there as well. Um, we just need to make sure kind of my elbow depth is undeniable and just be like really safe with those kind of options. Um, so we did try sync for a little bit, but um, like it takes kind of like two blocks to kind of figure it out and get used to it. And I was like, I have two blocks and do Malta. So I kind of tried it out for a block and I wasn't really feeling it. So we've just gone back to more of like a soft touch approach, but I just have my legs a lot further out in front of me and a little bit wider just to kind of minimize my arch. Yeah. Yeah. And I've also um, like IR'd my hands quite a bit just to kind of get me more flared. Yeah, that's yeah. it. But we did play around a lot with kind of like bringing my grip in, but then I just got more tucky. So yeah, I think this is just kind of the best approach for us. Yeah, it's been working it's really good. well. It's improved a lot. So compared to taking one whole block to, I guess, understand the technicalities of things bench, how has your technical adjustments been made? Like how, how long has it been since then? And what was the experience like? Yeah, so I've kind of um, just moved away from sync. So I started a new block like this week. So for the last week of last block, I went back to that soft touch. Um, but it's kind of like moving from like conventional to sumo back to conventional. Oh, so yeah. my numbers haven't progressed that much for bench. But at the end of the day, like um, I know falling into Malta, like I'm not like anywhere close to the podium so it's good just to kind of be able to go into the mindset of there being like okay I'm just trying to go three for three for bench get all white lights not get called for L rep, and just do what I can because I know it was very unfortunate that um Vicky, Vicky did bomb at world yeah. so I think we're just going to open it like something super super light and get me on the board hit something out in the back and then do something on the, do my second attempt on the platform. So just kind of like mess around with it like that and just make sure that I can go like three for three on bench. Yeah. And I think you can afford to do that because there are a lot of 57 juniors yeah. in the nomination. So you probably have a lot of time in between your attempts anyway to That's execute it. that. Yeah. 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 There's so many of us. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the biggest biggest fall I've ever seen, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be huge. Yeah, so we've been showing a lot of attention and love to your bench press, so let's dive a little of that to your other two lifts. So it's been about a month since bench wars again, and now that you are no longer, currently not training for a bench-only meet, how would you say that your lifts have progressed for squat and deadlift? Yeah, so I kind of took like one block off really focusing on, or maybe it was two blocks off focusing on squat or deadlift and come back and just slowly building them back up. Um, and then I know that I do have like, we've kind of figured out my deadlift like at nationals. We figured out what I need to do to kind of get that to go. So deadlifts have been going really well. I've been hitting like rep PBs and everything like that. Um, and squats are moving really well as well. I just kind of need to get better at kind of like my mindset going into squat because I kind of need to work on, and I'm working with a sports psychologist as well, Amelia she's Potts. She's amazing. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, I kind of like learning like different techniques to kind of really switch on for squats because that is quite like, I am quite competitive for squats. Um, so mm. it would be nice to even maybe podium for squat or something like that. But yeah, just trying to get that back to where it is, where it was kind of like at nationals or something like that. And would you say like it's attributed to sort of more of a mental block rather than just physical strength? Yeah, yeah. So definitely kind of like um, either like arousal levels or just kind of like um like because after you weigh in there's like so much stress with that refueling and hydrating and everything like that and then I just kind of like survive through squats and then I start benching and then I'm like oh everything's fine <laughs> and so it's just kind of like 
need to get to like where I am in bench. I just need to do the same thing for squats. So yeah. just different trial and error to kind of get into that um, like mindset and routine and everything like that as well. Yeah. I think uh, trialing with cuts and like trialing refeeds and rehydration strategies can take a lot of stress out of yeah especially yeah yeah, definitely yeah Yeah. and it's just kind of like switching on and just getting like really focused for squats as well yeah especially it's like you compete in the morning and then like you're half awake (laughs) yeah that's it yeah yeah Yeah. so yeah just kind of gotta get a bit more energized you'd be competing in the afternoon this time yeah i think it starts at like 1 30 or something like that yeah. 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 So in the afternoon, which will be nice. Yeah. Is this your first time competing in the afternoon? No. So normally I do compete in the afternoon, but mm. usually like it's a little later in the afternoon. So it would be nice to kind of like find it like around eleven. Because I feel like that's a good time. It's not like too late, but it's also not like really early. <laughs> oh yeah. I- I've seen meets that end around like ten just because like they have yeah. three sessions in a day yeah that's right yeah. yeah or even like we're doing like our like night of champs comp um in october and like that will start at like 6 p.m or something like that oh my god so yeah so it's a lot of people just like wait around all day <laughs> so now that you're prepping for worlds uh, three lift junior worlds what is the difference between your prep for nationals and currently your prep for worlds? Yeah, so um, with the last block, we were kind of trialing doing five days a week where we were just kind of doing a fifth day of benching. But we found that I just needed the extra kind of um, rest day in there to really make the bench um, show up. So we've gone back to four days um, and we're kind of running the same thing that we did going into nationals because it worked really, really well. So it's just uh, like ranking sets for my primary squat and then um doing um like ranking sets and then just, just find that I just need that extra warm up and it helps me like practice the lift and I get really used to it and I can yeah go into it and we're also trialing a little bit of like fatigued singles as well just to really increase my confidence especially like now with this new bench technique um just doing like like repeat singles just to get practice at setting up yeah. and unracking and everything like that with the new technique and with being a lightweight i i, I don't think that's a problem for you at all i, th- I think in fact you need yeah it. <laughs> yeah that's it yeah especially yeah, yeah. <laughs> kelly did a post about fatigue singles like recently yeah so exactly like, yeah i was like that's did, perfect timing <laughs> yeah did it resonate yeah. with you Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Like my coaching, um, my coaching Kelly are quite good friends. So I'm sure that they've probably chatted about my program quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> <And Yeah. laughs> we talked about your prep and now it seems to be going really well. Like you don't have injuries and you are rolling a lot of momentum now that Ben Rose has ended. And yeah. would you say there's a difference in your mindset for nationals compared to right now for Worlds? Yeah, definitely. And I think it's kind of just, um, I think now that I've done nationals and I've had that experience and I think there was a lot of pressure on me going into nationals to really like win. So obviously I could go to Malta. I think now that I've kind of secured my ticket and I'm, you know, going to Malta and I feel like a little bit of pressure is off, especially since I'm not going to be in the running for placing or competitive in the um, weight class so it would be nice to kind of just go out there do the best that I can and get that experience as well and explore Malta because it's so beautiful oh yeah it's so yeah. small as well I, I didn't yeah uh, yeah and, it would be nice yeah oh did you did you book the cruise that like they have no they have a cruise oh, they have a cruise <laughs> oh wow that's interesting yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I'll be coaching. I'll be coaching on the Australian team while I'm over there. So after I compete, I'm kind of jumping into coaching. Right, you're uh, little... assistant head coach, right? If I yeah, remember. yeah. So I'll be assistant coach. Yeah, so I'll be doing the plate loading and the talc, just like little jobs, <laughs> and making sure making sure everyone's ready. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think that's what yeah. the assistant head coach does. 
Oh, I'm not I'm not assistant head coach. I'm just assistant coach. Oh, assistant coach. Got it, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm not assistant head coach. Okay. I, I don't I don't do numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do numbers. <laughs> so you'll be helping out the Austrian team along yeah. with David. Is Jacob yeah. going? He is going, yeah. So he'll yeah. be there as well. I, yeah. Then I think Aiden's going as well. Yeah, there'll be quite a few of us going, so it'll yeah. be really nice. So, what are you looking forward to the most at Worlds? Um, I think, I guess, just getting more experience on the international platform, especially now doing a three-lift comp, I'm sure it will be completely different to bench. Um, and just, of course, seeing like the international refing for bench depth, just to kind of get an idea of, what they want <laughs> and like it, and if I'm actually hitting bench depth now um because I feel like I put a lot of work into that um a lot of like tears have gone into that so <laughs> I just hope that like finally I can hit bench step but I would yeah. just see what they are on the day and then after Malta oh, and like coaching as well on the international team that would be such a great opportunity as well and just being able to meet a lot of people and I have some clients competing as well. So it'd be nice to kind of meet them and watch them and help them compete as well. So that'll be really nice. And then after Malta, I'm going on like a little bit of a holiday. So to Italy. So that will be a nice oh, little Italy. bit of a reset. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so I think I'm doing about nine, nine days there. By yourself? Um, my partner's coming with me. Oh, yeah. sweet. Yeah. And yeah. is your partner going to Malta with you? He is. So he's on the coaching team as well. Oh, that's great. Okay. So. Yeah. So it's good. I'll have a nice crew with me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we did talk about your goals at Wolves. It was to have a good day. Uh, and unfortunately, this time you weren't really in contention. You're, you're not in contention for pacing. So yeah. Is that something it. you'd like to change in the coming years when you go into opens? Oh yeah! Oh, that would be that would obviously be so amazing. Um, I think it's just like some of those open girls have been in there in the game for so long. Like Liz Craven has been doing this for years. Yeah. Um. So and even yeah, just any of the other open girls that have been doing it for so long. So it'll be interesting to see where I am come opens. Um. But yeah, I'm just excited for where I am. I'm trying to maximize this last year as a junior. So <laughs> bench, bench worlds, junior worlds, try and do as much as I can. And you said you were going to maximize your last year as juniors. So yeah. Are you eyeing any comps after junior worlds? Like what, what's your plan for the future? Uh, after junior worlds, I think I would do like a little bit of like an off season. <laughs> Take a little bit. <laughs> Not not take a full break. I'll still be doing SBD, but I think especially now with the new the APA Federation, how the qualifying is for that, I won't need to do another like qualifying comp. I'll be able to jump straight into nationals. Um, and luckily, like I have my fingers crossed that nationals will be in Perth, so I won't have to travel or anything like oh, that. Yeah. So it's gonna be yeah, amazing. so it'll be nice. Yeah, it'll be nice. It'll be like a local meet for me because I haven't done a local meet in so long now. <laughs> <laughs> It's just been it's just been all like national international. I'm like, oh, I just want to do like a home meet where I can just kind of like yeah. roll out of bed and go. Like no stress, um, and it's just really yeah, sad. that's it. Yeah, I wake up in my own bed the morning of competition. That will be nice. <laughs> yeah, so I do nationals and then probably like either Asia's or something like that. Or if I could mm. go to worlds, that would be amazing. But obviously now going into opens and a small fish in a big pond. <laughs> so lastly before we end this episode i think our viewers would want to hear more about like yourself so how did you what was your entry like into powerlifting and nutrition coaching yeah so i've always really been interested in nutrition my mum was um a bodybuilder when i was a little bit younger so i'd always kind of watched her with nutrition and tracking and everything like that and just making sure that her nutrition was really great so i started getting an interest in that so i started um nutrition at university so i was doing nutrition bioscience um and then i moved up to perth from like a small town down south called bunbury so I moved up to Perth for uni and I kind of just wanted a little bit of like a community and I was already kind of just like lifting in a commercial gym. Obviously with my mum being 
a bodybuilder. I was in the gym from like 14 years old. <laughs> um, <laughs> she dropped me off at the little gym and I'd train while she trained. So um, it was a or I, lifting has always been something that's a part of my life. So I think I just wanted a little bit of a community. And obviously there was a powerlifting gym. I think I just searched up powerlifting gym and I found Strength Club. Um, and I emailed Jacob. I went there and I would never leave. <laughs> I love it there <laughs> so much. It's so nice. Yeah, yeah, I've met so many like amazing people and just the growth I've had just in one year. Like um, I would never imagine being like, going to junior worlds or bench worlds like a year ago like when i was starting and totaling like 300 (laughs) and benching like 50 kilos (laughs) it's yeah the growth has just been amazing and yeah and how was apart from uni how did you sort of enter the nutrition coaching route like how did you yeah yeah so obviously when i got into powerlifting i was more interested in kind of the sports side of nutrition rather than the general health side that they Mm. kind of teach you at university so i went through um the sports nutrition association and got my accreditation in sports nutrition so that kind of taught me a little bit more on nutrition for performance and weight cutting um and all of those little things are really applicable to not just powerlifting but sports in general um so it's been really great to kind of have that different background as well um and i think i really really enjoy sports nutrition as a whole um i think my future plans are after malta i'll kind of do my masters in dietetics and become a dietitian that i can work with an even wider variety of people yeah i think dietitian is like a huge step up to a nutrition yeah that's it yeah yeah and do you have any slots for nutrition coaching now and if there are how can our viewers reach out yeah so i have um slots available for fortnightly or monthly coaching so you can um send me a message on instagram my instagram is just daisy purple motion or in my bio on instagram there's also an application form which you can fill out just so that i can get a little bit more information on what you've done in the past your goals and what you really want to focus on nutrition and there you have it. So thank you for hopping on, Daisy. And it was a pleasure talking. Oh, you're so welcome. Yeah, you're so welcome. Yeah. It's always great having a chat. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, uh, thanks for hopping on. And that concludes our episode for Health Podcasts, Athlete Things, Road to Junior Worlds 2024, Malta. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.